Rob, where, where would you like to come? Anywhere right? you, you want to be. Whatever there, makes you comfortable. We can just come up there. And <clears throat> you can come any place you want to. Thank you. Um, my name is Jay Baumgartner, and this is um, Levon Fletcher. She is our current Whitley County Director um, at the office here. She's been here about six months as yes. Director now. Uh, been with us a couple of years. She's been with us a couple of years. I've been with Bowen Center for just about 20 years now, actually over 20 years. Um, and this is actually, I think, only about the second time that I've actually appeared um, in front of Whitley County here go to other counties by far more than this county. Um, but we certainly welcome the opportunity. We're welcome to come um, anytime you, you'd like us to. Um, but basically, just a little bit about Bowen Center. We've been around since 1961. We just celebrated our 50th year anniversary last year. Um, we are currently in eight counties, um, of which five of those counties um, is what they call our catchment area in which we do get property tax funds um, from each of those counties. I did, in fact, bring some copies of our annual report that we prepare each year that does tell a little bit more about ourselves that you might find of interest. I got one left, so you can get one too. Um, But that tells a little bit more um, kind of about us. Um, <coughs> we started our first name in Ford County back in 61, which when I created was in Ford County, later got added to county, renamed ourselves so Five County, and then in 1978, uh, we renamed ourselves so after the governor, Otis R. Bowen Center, it happened to be from Marshall County, Bremen area, which was part of our, what they call our catchment area. Um, and, and so we renamed ourselves so at that point in time. Um, for our services in Whitley County, we served last year, last year, these are fiscal years, which would have ended in June of 2011, we served um, just under 1,400 um, patients um, for the year, um, which is about 4%, I think it's a little over 4% of the population of Whitley County. So in a given meeting, maybe just slightly bigger than the, it's about one out of every 25 or maybe one person in this room would have accessed our services at some point during that fiscal year. And so we, we end up serving a lot more um, patients than um, a lot of people realize. Um, we do serve a high, um, number of lower income folks. Um, I think our, what was it, 65% of the patients we serve have family income of 20,000 or less. And if you use 30,000 or less, 78% um, of them um, having family income of 30,000 or less. And so as you can see, we serve a very high proponent of lower income folks. Um, we don't turn anybody away. Um, due to their inability to pay. Um, now, if they have the ability to pay and just refuse to pay, well, that's a different story. Um, but we do offer fee assistance to anybody who does not have um, any sort of payer sources. We've got a lot of staff that work hard um, to help clients get, like Medicaid, if they're eligible for it, to get them enrolled so they're able to have a payer source to be able to uh, provide um, services. Um, we also have um, an inpatient unit um, that's based in Warsaw. Um, we serve 47 Whitley County patients for a total of 294 um, bed days um, during the year. As far as the office here go, we currently are employing, I think we're around 33 to 35 staff, somewhere in that neighborhood um, currently, um, paying them about 1.2 million in wages and benefits. Um, for their services or, or for their, their salaries uh, during the time. Um, so, um, as, as you alluded to, um, we are technically required by state law to fund the local community mental health center. Um, this year's upcoming budget request is $176,400. 
um, based on the formula that they um, got set up. Um, and that funding really does go toward directly toward patient care. It is devoted to this county. It's not spread to other counties. It's devoted to this county for the payment of fee assistance, for charity care, for those services that your patients are unable to, to pay for that we will serve um, regardless of, of their ability to pay. And, and so we use that funding uh, to help subsidize that. We are, um, I think it was like 78% of our, um, excuse me, 82% of our funding does actually come from some sort of federal dollars, state dollars, or your property tax local dollars. So we only actually collect 18% from patients or their um, general like insurance, many care types of companies. Uh, so the vast majority of our uh, revenue that we receive do come from um, federal, state, local dollars, such as what you provide. We um, do receive quite a bit of referral from um, <coughs> local agencies. It's about one out of every two, just under 50% um, are referred to us, whether from the court system, probation, um, school systems. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a few in there, um, but basically those local organizations who have recognized that these particular patients have some sort of need, um, mental health need, substance abuse need, uh, where we're able to fill that void. Um, you do have uh, three board of directors that sit on our board from Whitley County. Um, we just have board members from those counties that um, provide us local dollars, so our five catchment area counties, which um, are Marshall County, Kafiaco County, Wabash County, Huntington County, and then Whitley County. Um, they're, they're the ones that each have three members that sit on board of directors. Currently, we have uh, Eric Hel Helfrich. Um, he was a long time, um, I'm not sure of that position. I know he was CPA with um, DECO. Um, company. Um, second board member, Dawn Michaels, um, she's joined the board here within the last year. She's a um, school psycholo um, psychologist, guidance counselor um, here in Whitley County. And then here within the last two months, um, Jim Fleck, who I guess currently was a former mayor here in Columbia City, joined the board of directors as well. Um, so Whitley County does have three representatives uh, that do sit on our board of directors. Question you may have, I know I kind of read it off really fast, kind of a kind of a history summary. Um, I, see, I see you're pointing at things in the end report, so you're looking at it. That's a good thing. That's what we want. Um, Are most of your um, clients uh, <coughs> substance abuse? Is, is that what you deal with mostly? Or Actually, no. The vast majority, and you might better speak more numbers. The vast majority are um, mental health, <coughs> behavioral. Um, we really grown a lot in recent years. In fact, I think we're up to almost 700 employees um, now throughout our eight county. Um, the biggest growth that we've had is actually in our children's services, school-based. Uh, we've gotten a lot of partnership with school system to work with um, kids with behavioral problems, um, that sort of thing. Substance abuse is obviously something we focus on, but it's, it's a lot smaller um, percentage of our um, numbers. I don't know to break it down off the top of my head, but I'm going to say 15% is probably all. So it's, it's a lot smaller okay. number. Thank you. So that's what we do. So. So again, what for one hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars? What do what do we what do we get? What's the taxpayers of the county get? I, I mean, I mean, bottom line, when, when I run financial numbers, revenue we receive versus expenses. June of two thousand and eleven, we lost three hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Current year, this is through April, we are two hundred twelve thousand in the hole. 
And so Are you we would Whitley not. County now? This is just Whitley County. Yes, this is just Whitley County. Okay. Um, okay. And so without <coughs> those dollars, we would clearly have to change our approach and what we were able to do. In other words, we would not be able to say, "Come in, come on, come all. We will serve you. Um, we will, we will um, give you charity care. We'll give you be assistant." We would have to cut that um, substantially back from what we're able to do now. Gee, if you've been around for 20 years, has 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 this program where the counties have to kick in been around for 20 years? It has. It has it's always been, been like ever that. since I've, I've been here. Yeah. At one point, it was like what was it, four percent of the assessed valuation, and then that changed like in 2003. So there was there there was a, a formula yep. like that. There's been a formula things. ever since. Okay. Yep, it, it did nothing okay. new. All right. And, 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 and put it in perspective, the types of clients we see, I mean, you think about typically what happened when a, uh, maybe a substance abuse person or somebody else, typically when do they access our services? Typically when they hit rock bottom. Either they've just gotten out of jail, don't have a job, or they've gone through a divorce, lost their job. Usually when they get to us, uh, to finally come, something really drastically going on in their life, and a lot of time that they, they don't have income, they don't have money to afford services, um, and and so the the law really does make a lot of sense to be able to for us to be able to provide those services because they're the ones that really need them. You you were astute on the pointing for me. It's pointing that. That you said Whitley had three directors, but there's only one listed. Yep, yep. So this is that a little bit outdated. Like I said, it was that's that okay. Yeah, that, 2011. That, I was wondering if there were two more. Yep, so yep. They currently you. do have um, okay. three members. Okay. okay. Um, so what's this? I know this is out of our realm, but what what's the deal in Noble County then? Do they not have directors? Or? As far as, correct, correct, correct. Um, we have expanded our operations from those five counties into uh, the three we've added are Noble, LaGrange, and Allen County. Uh, they do not have any directors on a board of directors. And that's the question we hear all the time is, well, why don't they have to pay you? Or is our money going to those counties? Uh, we hear that one all the time. And, and the, the easy answer is, um, no, your money's not going there. We operate a little differently in those counties than we do here. Here, we offer full continuum of care. It's come one, come all. Um, we're, we're here to serve because this is the county we are designated in. Those other three counties, um, for lack of a better word, we treat them more as a more of a for-profit than really a not-for-profit. In other <coughs> words, we're there because we're able to help our bottom line to be there. There is a need that the local mental health center wasn't providing. We were requested to come in. Um, for Noble County in particular, it was the uh, court system uh, that requested that we come in. Allen, it was the school systems. And um, we don't necessarily offer a full continuum of care. Um, we basically run those counties um, to at least break even. If we're not able to break even, we move out. Which we were in El Elkhart County at one point, we were in St. Joe County at one point. We're not able to make the county uh, profitable. We ended up making tough decisions and shut the doors and closed those offices. But those offices we treat differently. Whereas Whitley County, we're here for the duration. Um, the state has designated this as our territory and we're going to treat it as such. I, I think that was, my, that was my other question is you, you talk about this designation, so can another similar company come in and ask the state for for the territory? I mean, is that they cannot any right now? Currently, they cannot. They can come in and provide services all they want, kind of like what we did in Novo, but they've allocated eight dollars to a specific mental health center. And to to be to be honest, I that's one rule I don't like because, like I said, there's certain counties you don't. Even, you're only game in town, you can kind of set the rules. And that kind of what happened in Noble and Allen County is there were certain needs that the local mental health center was not providing. Thank you. Joe, any questions? Why, why does
Kosky Hospital County had almost twice as many clients you see than the next county, which is Allen, of 2,800. You say you see clients served 5,500 in Kosky Hospital and only 2,800 in Allen and LaGrange 198. Why the... LaGrange La is brand new. We've only been there um, since January of, of last year. So we've only been there a very short amount of time. Okay. So LaGrange is really small for that very reason. Um, it, there, there's not an easy answer for the explanation as far as the number other than that's the need that's been approached by us. So in other words, the court that the um, school system, et cetera, um, we've gotten the need and, and we will meet that need. So we will grow an office as much as we need to grow an office based on the, the need, the referrals, the types of services that we've uh, been given. And so yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with that where a corporate office is. Um, there's been a lot of emphasis, a lot of push in that county, and, and it is a bigger county um, as far as population. Um, goes, but um, I think if you do the numbers, and I, I didn't bring them, it still is is close to um, like a four percent penetration rate. Might be a little bit less than Kafkiak, but it, it it's it's fairly close as far as the um, uh, percent of the population that we serve. Oh. Like Whitley County, that the, the fourteen hundred was about four percent of the population. Same thing goes in Fiasco County. It's, it's it's pretty close to four percent. I think it might be a little bit more in that county. As a former paramedic, I would bring people to your inpatient facility. Mm -hmm. Then did that person get counted as a Whitley County person, or since the inpatient? I thought maybe that's why the Casco numbers were so high because. Is that not the only place you have an inpatient facility? That is the only inpatient facility that we have. <clears throat> I would have to look, but I, I think, let's let, let put it that way, it's based on zip code where the patient is okay. going. I thought maybe that was in it, because I, like, Commissioner Rethlake, I saw that 5,500 number, mm -hmm. but then I was thinking maybe you, you count an inpatient as an inpatient. I don't believe we do. I don't believe okay. we do. Okay. I, I won't swear to that, but I don't believe we do. Now, now you got to question my report. So I'm going to go look at that. Oh, I just, <laughs> just, just, it just, it just like Commissioner Rethlick said, it just, it jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. That, uh, uh, but then that's your, that's your home base. It is our home base. It's your home base. So I, I sort of understand that too. Any other questions, friends? Not a problem. Well, we're happy really to come back again. Time. Like I said, don't yeah. make it this every every ten years. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably make it a little less than ten years. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is not a problem. Right. I mean, we we enjoy coming sure. and, and educating people about our services. Sure. A lot of people just don't know. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to thank you. educate us. Any so. tough question for Levon here? We, we you haven't put her in a hot seat yet. I told him I was just going to be a cheerleader. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> she she came in case you had any major clinical stuff that I <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much.